All right, this one's for Facebook, but I guess anybody else. Uh, this is a Pride DX300. I'm in the process of modifying it and converting it into a two tuber. But anyway, um, it's been monobanded already. Um, not by me, but you know, monobanding a Pride is pretty simple. Um, you don't need to band switch, you don't need the extra coils, you don't need the extra capacitors that are switched in. All you need is your tune cap. The output of the tube goes through this um, cap here, that's the plate blocking cap. It keeps the DC uh, from going into the um, tank circuit and, you know, out. So this cap lets the RF go out but keeps the DC from going out. So the RF goes into the tune cap where you're basically tuning the tube or tubes. You need about four turns of coil again. Um, and this is an original <coughs> coil from the Pride DX300. It's originally the first thing in line. And that's originally where it's um, tapped at or where it went to the other coils and that's all you need is that coil there those four turns of coil for a mono banded Pride DX300 and those four turns go into the load cap here now on the load cap it's basically a three section capacitor you got this section with nothing on it and these two are tied together so it's actually only using these two sections of the load capacitor because for 10 11 meters you only need two of these as you go to 20 meters 40 meters and all that you need more coil and you need more capacitance um, for those um, higher bands However, for 10 and 11 meters, which, you know, they have, if you work on 10, you can work on 11 meters. So um, all you need is two sections of this three section capacitor. Maybe we can get a better look there. So you can see it goes out of this coil of the four turns and it goes straight into um, the middle section. And then there's a jumper over here to the... Um, uh, section on the right so it's using this capacitor and that capacitor and this one is not connected it's not needed for 10 and 11 meters so since it's not needed and it actually uh, might mess up the tuning because you might have too much capacity if you hook that one up so um, just those two or it don't matter which two it might be hooked over here to these two but you only need two sections of the low capacitor and then this piece of coax here is just the output of it. It's finished doing what it needs to do and the output goes over here to the meter and the meter um, and then other side of the meter that's the output that goes to the relay and that's it. Um, this here choke is a safety choke. Um, this one actually blocks RF from going to ground well, that's a, that's a bad way of saying it. This is basically open to RF. It doesn't block it. Um, um, RF can't go through this choke, just like DC can't go through this capacitor. The choke works just the opposite. RF can't go through it, so and that choke goes to ground. So RF, since it can't pass through this choke, um, this choke is basically invisible to RF. But what that's for is if this capacitor here fails, because that's blocking that, you know, to about 2.5 kilovolts of DC, this capacitor, if you have two of them or whatever, but that, that capacitor is blocking that um, DC from coming across and going to the output. So stuff does short, right? Especially with, you know, 2.5 kilovolts and harmonics and spikes and stuff going through there or people don't tune their amplifiers right. Um, that capacitor um, does short, you know, there's nothing on the capacitor, but stuff happens. Um, so if that shorts and you didn't have any other safety precautions, you would get 
2.5 kilovolts, you know, going to the output, going to the relay and out your coax. And basically, um, it could shock you. It could kill you. It could destroy your equipment. Um, so you don't want that. So this choke here, which is invisible to RF, but, and it goes to ground, but when if DC, you know, gets past this, because that's shorted or leaked or something, um, it would end up, you know, go through the coil, and it would hit, you know, the hot side of that choke, and then it would go right to ground, the DC, because this would ground it out. Um, a coil like this is a dead short to DC, but it's open to RF. That's the way that choke works, and that's what it's designed to do, and that's its only purpose. You know, I've, I've seen some, you know, mud duck books or builders, you know, like I took it off and I, I didn't see any difference, or I saw one more watt because I took that out, you know. Well, you took out a safety feature and you just made the amp more dangerous, or um, some cheapskates have built big amps, I've seen it, that don't have this choke. You know, uh, amp will work fine without it, but if so, it's a safety thing. It's like a fuse. You know, uh, amp will work fine without a fuse, but if something happened, oh boy, cancel Christmas. Same with this. It's a safety device. It's there to protect you and your equipment. Um, so that's the purpose of that choke. And again, this is all you need for 10 or 11 meters. By the way, a lot of people don't know that these plates down here are some makeshift fixed capacitors. As I said earlier, as you go up in um, the band, you need more capacitance. More, even you know, you'll switch in the third one here. You know, as you go up to 20 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters, and you need even more than that has, even with all three. So you start switching in these capacitors here. That's all that is. And that would go to the band switch if it had them. But this one has been mono banded. Um, the bias, which is normally in the back, there's a bias control, has been taken to the front of this one. And it's got the Nomad boards in it, so you can vary the bias a lot more than you can on a um, standard Pride DX300. But I didn't want to get into all that. I just wanted to show the um, tank coil because there's somebody on Facebook like, you know, what do I do? Where do I hook it to? Um, what do I need? What do I do with all them extra coils? Again, this is the original coil, tank coil, and this is all you need for 10 11 meters um you know people ask you know how wide do i need to be and you know how many us basically um easiest way to tune it if it's not tune it up right you can squeeze it together a little bit to get a little bit more inductance or you can widen it out until you get the thing to tune right um but anyway that's another discussion too i just wanted to make this easy four coils four turns of coil that's what you need in most um, amplifiers that'll work on 10 11 meters somewhere around four um, if you got uh, less tubes you know for smaller amper you might need more more turns of coil and for stuff like a you know like a six tube or or 12 tube phantom you'll need um, less turns of coil but anyway for the most part somewhere around four turns of coil and this is again factory from a um, from this Pride DX300, and by the way, that one I'm been modding with, and here's one that works. I took the cover off this one. It's been mono banded too. This is a normal Pride DX300 that's been mono banded, and same same um, four turns of coil, same thing. I just used this one because all that stuff is out of way, out the way, um, so it's easier to see. So. That's it for this one. Hope it helps you, guy. Bye.